you know, if you don't quite have the flywheel in business number one, but you're above business number one, you could look at where the high margin flywheel is going to be, or if you could add one to. If you're not quite in the stage where you're above business number one, get above business number one. Try and find a flywheel within it. If you can't, aim for another business where you can find a flywheel that is a either cold ads or hiring of salespeople or um, email marketing, SMS marketing, bulk voicemail drops, um, or let's say it's a content business, the hiring of the writers, the hiring of the videographers on a massive level at, at low cost, um, or you know selling guys into some newsletter campaign. Some type of relatively low friction um, money maker that's going to earn you either new followers that can be converted, new, new customers if it's a product-based business, or um, new clients if it's a service business that are going to continue to give you recurring income over time and you only have to kind of pay for them once in terms of the flywheel and the flywheel is 100, 200% you know, ROI type of flywheel um, where ideally that return is back to you within the next month or the next six months or the next year. In some, in some industries it's going to be a longer cycle before you get that money back. Like if you were just, I've got a client that's running, you know, a very fast growing sub stack off of his Twitter and we determined he could run Twitter ads to Twitter by, you know, spend 200 K, pick up a hundred thousand Twitter followers. Within two years, he's going to get that money back because of the conversions through his sub stack or maybe a year and a half. And then it's, we're just determining, you know, if that investment is worth it on, you know, a year and a half, two year timeline to get that money back versus do we run ads on the sub stack directly or do we run ads on a couple of the other ventures that he has where perhaps that money could, could be returned within a month or so. But on those other ventures, it's more of a ad into selling a product where you kind of only get that money once, whereas on, uh, let's say, a social media follower, um, like for example, my YouTube channel, if, if you've been watching my stuff for a while and you like my stuff, you could be you know, investing with me over the next decade, over the next two decades, over the next three decades. So there is something to be said about um, investing in some type of follower or subscriber, even if it's a longer tail to get that money back because they have to watch you for a certain while. But that's a potential customer or client for life. It's up to you to determine what, what you think the best flywheel is. Um, but hopefully you get an idea of, of what a flywheel is. And so let's say you're you know, making 100K a month in revenue or whatever, and you're taking home 30K, instead of pulling that whole 30K out and spending 10 and putting 20K into your investments, pull out the 10 to live on if you're living in America. If you're living abroad like I do, you can live on less and still live very well. But put the 20K back into a, a flywheel. And if you don't have one, find a flywheel. If you can't find one in your current business, find something where you can put that fucking 20K back get 100% uh, or, or 200% ROI on it, get, get within the next month. So that 20K you put in in January turns to 40K in February, and that turns to 80K, da 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 so that you can scale that up to the 200 or 300K and per month. That's the only way that I see to get through this decade for sure is being in the 1% is not enough. 1% is Jew arbitrage, make 20K a month, live in Thailand. In fact, you're probably in the 0.01%. You gotta aim for the 0.001% to where this thing is solved for sure. There's just too much chaos, too, too much uncertainty, um, too many ways to get hit from all these things that are coming down the pipe, both this year and in the future, that you just need to get into the 0.001% for sure. Still move abroad, still geo arbitrage the income, um, you know. But aim to buy a developing world to be able to buy a developing world condo um, every month, and I call this the go exponential strategy, right? Go 
throw the money back into your business, go exponential. You get up to 200K a month, take home, even the reset hits, you know, you, you can deal with pretty much anything. You could deal with the currency being, you know, valued at 80% less of what it used to be. You're still going to be taking home the equivalent of $40,000. And your competitors are going to get destroyed. You're going to be able to pick up all that business. So you need to get the income up to an exponential level so that whatever happens, you can handle it. Not to mention, if you can just get one good year exponentially, right? There's a four bedroom penthouse condo in Bangkok. There's a Toyota Fortuner. I'll take the Toyota logo off. It looks like, it doesn't quite look like a range, but it's a nice $30,000 car. There's supplies for the next 10 years. Um, there's paying off all your web hosting bills and business bills. There's paying your phone bill for 10 years. Um, you know, there's, there's a, a second lifestyle property in, let's say, Batumi in Georgia for 300 grand. Killer property. You've got base one and base two. You've got your assets in something physical like real estate that's going to track inflation. And, you know, you take the rest and put it into cash gold. Well, not, not quite the rest. The rest that you pulled out, put into cash and gold, keep putting the rest into the business. Point being, if you go exponential, you made... You know, you, you might have saved in that one year 10 times that, 10 times more than you had saved in your entire life before that. So even just one or two good years ex after you've gone exponential puts you in a net worth position to ideally survive whatever's going to come down the pipe for the rest of this decade. And here's why I think so. Because if, if the guy making 200, 200 grand a month can't survive, who's going to survive? Right, you know, this, these these changes have to be implemented, um, you know, by the wealthy people in that particular country, right? And if you're if you're living in Thailand and you can't get by on two hundred k a month, which officials are rolling out this change? Which officials are rolling out changes where they and their families couldn't get by? Um, so, I think that's the best game plan for this year. Um, in regards to finances, it's also a solid game plan for the next decade. Uh, but stay tuned. I'm going to have courses on how to survive the next decade on each individual section in terms of investing, trading, what to do about social credit, what to do about carbon credits, what to do about all these different things, um, that are going to be implemented on a worldwide scale. Um, None of this will be political. None of this will be negative. This will all be specific strategies for you to survive and thrive. So stay tuned for those videos. Stay tuned for those courses. This is what I've been working on, amongst other things, for the last two years, um, as I haven't been posting much. And I've been doing a ton of coaching and messaging within my brotherhood to make sure that I have this perf perfect before I put it out to you guys. 